This week on UND Insider Weekly, the panel takes on football's first loss of the season. And volleyball getting swept at their second tournament of the season. We go break ground and talk about one of UND's largest construction projects in recent years. Plus, football's offensive coordinator Luke Schleisner talks to the panel about the start of football season. The French Fry Feed is one of the biggest events from Potato Bowl Week. It allows student athletes to interact with members of the community in a unique way. Welcome to UND Insider Weekly alongside Tom Miller and Brad Schlossman from the Grand Forks Herald and Paul Ralston from UND Athletics. I'm Jim Hennessy. Well, football, Saturday night at the Alaris Center. We talked last week about the University of South Dakota, South Dakota State University coming in with Zach Zenner. He was everything that uh, we had talked about, everything that was advertised. But I think the question, gentlemen, uh, that a lot of people are asking, does this signify his 297 yards signify the same defense that we're going to see all season long as we saw last year from UND? What do you think, Tom? Uh, that's the biggest concern. Everybody's going to pr make UND prove that they can stop the run. Right now, you know, they haven't proven that. But, uh, you know, we're going to see Zenner do that to a lot of teams. I don't know if we're going to see 295 yards. But he did get 37 carries. He it was a workload. Um, I think what UND is going to try to hang their hat on a little bit is the fact the uh, second half they got a few stops that they needed to allow themselves to get back in the game and set up their offense to have a chance to win it late. I think that was pertinent, don't you, Brad, that they, when it came right down to it, when they needed it, they did get the stops they needed. Yeah, but uh, ultimately it's, it's too late. Buck, you, you, know, you, you just can't give up 295 yards rushing and expect to win a game, so that needs to be corrected and uh, you know, for them to have a chance in the future. Explain yourself a little bit on why they had 295 yards, just Zach Zanner? Zach Zanner, he's a highly touted guy, and um, obviously the defense didn't make enough plays against him. Paul? You look at that offensive line for South Dakota State, it presents a challenge for any squad, really. <laughs> you know, uh, they did a great job of, of you know, getting Zenner to the second level, and, and I think there's actually some potential NFL guys on that offensive line for South Dakota State. So a credit to the Jacks. I mean, they, they did enough up front. Obviously, they did a lot up front to, to really, you know, make that the storyline of the game. But I still think there are some positives to take out of in that second half. I think the defense can build off of it. I thought they were much better in team tackling in the second half. And I'm not sure that we know the full story yet until we see a few more games. Well, I don't think there were the missed tackles that we saw last year. And in talking to uh, Coach Musman, he talked about, you know, this man here, this man in the wrong place here. Those are things that they can learn and, uh, and maybe get better from. Hopefully that will be the story this coming week for sure. Also last week, North Dakota had seven drives, I believe, where they did not score after that opening touchdown to Greg Harden. And then the change in quarterback came. Uh, do we have a, co a quarterback controversy here uh, uh, with uh, Bartles and Mulberg? I think you have to. You know, just, you know, he threw for 260-some uh, yards, I believe, in less than a half of football. Uh, engineered three scoring drives, um, showed that he can really uh, throw the ball well on the run. I think that's what separated him from Ryan Bartles a little bit. Uh, to be fair to Ryan Bartles, uh, he was plagued by some drop passes early in that game. I think specifically on that second drive, uh, he had some good balls that were just dropped by receivers. And then Joe Moberg is going against a defense that's, uh, you know, up three scores. So, you know, you got to take all that in consideration, but I think Joe showed enough that uh, he's definitely at least going to get a long look here uh, in the next couple weeks. Maybe it wasn't even a situation where we knew 100% who the starter was. I know Bartles did get the start, but um, you know I think uh, the coaching staff alluded all along that Mulberg would see some playing time. So I don't know if we've ever, you know, definitively said the starter here. Paul, do you think it was uh, there was a miss in the third quarter? Uh, it was right in front of me where uh, Greg Harden was open. He was behind two defenders down about the 10-yard line and just pass just didn't get there. Do you think that was the bot, that was the end of it for him right there and maybe part of the reason? Maybe part of it, but at the same time I think it was kind of a body of work game and kind of just how the game was evolving. You know, you look at it, uh, South Dakota State was getting, collapsing that pocket and Ryan was at that time maybe just maybe the, the his internal clock was maybe not where it needed to be, where Joel Mulberg, you have to give him credit, where I felt like if there was one thing where he excelled in in that game was maybe his clock was a little bit better where to kind of slide and sift through the pocket or slide up in the pocket and move away from a little bit of pressure to buy a little bit of time. But if you actually look at the way the coaches probably grade everything, you know, you, you probably grade quarter, both quarterbacks on some of their decision making, a couple of passes here and there by both. 
probably you'd like to maybe have back, but that's also maybe a condition of the youth at that position. Push the timeout button a little bit. They're both redshirt freshman quarterbacks, so are we expecting too much, I guess, uh, at least to start the season? That's what you're going to get. You're going to get some great plays. You're going to get some errors. All right, this past weekend at Middle Tennessee State, the Invitational there, the UND volleyball team lost all three, four matches that they played in. Is there a concern right now that they lost two of them in five games? So they're stretching them to five games, but as happened last year, they didn't finish off those five games with a win. Paul, you're, you're a volleyball guy. Yeah, you know, that actually did surprise me a little bit, uh, Tim. I expected them to go out there and find a way to get a couple, maybe one or two of those matches. Um, it is a bit of a concern, and I think sometimes in volleyball, um, you know, you can challenge yourself with a great schedule. I know that's what Coach Harding wanted to do, but sometimes I almost think maybe can we get somebody who you're the pro prohibitive favorite so you can get a little bit of that confidence, you know, going, and, and maybe that hasn't happened yet. You really haven't seen a team where they can, you know, they've had South Dakota State and they rolled in that match in, in the, the first weekend of the year, but everybody else has been very challenging, and you just, it, they haven't had a chance to really build that confidence so that they, when they get into those game five situations, they can rely upon that confidence. That so you want to make out the schedule? I do, yes, absolutely, yeah. Brad, any thoughts on that? <laughs> oh, I, I think there is something to that. You, you know, you do want to have some, mix in some difficult teams, you know, to challenge your team and see where you're at. But at the same time, you, you know, you don't want to ruin all confidence by uh, starting out uh, with a really tough record. And, I guess we'll see where it goes from here. The big sky is obviously the important season and that's coming up here. Well, with the veterans time that they have on the team, you would think that that better competition would prepare them better for the big sky, wouldn't you? Right, and you know, apart from picking off a, a big time win that could generate interest in your program and get your kids a lot of confidence, really all you're working towards is that big sky. So, you know, if, if these losses are preparing you to have success in the big sky, then, then it's worth it because your record right now doesn't really mean anything. How they do through the Big Sky is what really what matters. The volleyball team will play in New Orleans at the Sugar Bowl Invitational this weekend. Coming up, North Dakota Athletics breaks ground on their next big project. And offensive coordinator Luke Schleisner talks about that and about the start of the football season that he joins us in the Coach's Corner. All next on UND Insider Week. Preparation starts early. You're setting up cameras, scouting the area, sitting in a tree stand. No unnecessary movements. Blend into your surroundings. The animal pops out and you're ready to go. The atmosphere at the archery shop is awesome. It's a place to get info on how to become a better bow hunter. I'm Eric Shack. I'm an archery expert at Shields. Some consider graduation the end of the college experience. For others, it's just the beginning. And the university provided an environment where I could grow. And many years after I graduated, I'm still receiving dividends from my experience as a student at UND. The University of North Dakota Alumni Association is committed to growing the university by growing the alumni family. Right now at Burger King, choose any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Whether you're craving a Whopper sandwich and an original chicken sandwich, an original chicken sandwich and a premium Alaskan fish sandwich, or a Whopper and another Whopper. Come in today and get any two for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. Right now at Burger King, choose any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Whether you're craving a Whopper sandwich and an original chicken sandwich, an original chicken sandwich and a premium Alaskan fish sandwich, or a Whopper and another Whopper. Come in today and get any two for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. The Big Sky Conference has been showing the world who we are and how we play. 50 years of authenticity, hard work, community, and 50 years of playing to win. But remembering that our mission is bigger than winning. We're the Big Sky, the heart of Division One. 
the heart of the American West. North Dakota football single game tickets are on sale now. North Dakota football takes on Montana in the annual Hall of Fame game sponsored by Midco Sports Network. Wear black for the annual blackout versus Montana at the Alara Center. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. UND Insider Weekly is sponsored by Shields, Gear, Passion, Sports. By Burger King, where taste is king. And by The Ground Round. 40 years ago, the Winter Sports Center opened its doors and became the home of UND hockey. Last Thursday, UND had a groundbreaking that starts their next big journey in athletics. This is one of those signature projects of that North Dakota Spirit Campaign and truly symbolic in that regard. Like Tim, on behalf of the entire University of North Dakota, I want to say thanks to everyone who has participated in such an intimate way in bringing this new facility for our students to fruition. We talk here at the university about exceptional UND. This is a roadmap of our values, of where we're going to go and how we're going to get there. Standing here today, you can really feel that this project that's been a dream for so many years is finally happening. And this is going to be a reality in just a few months for all of us. This is truly a landmark day for UND Athletics, for the university, and for the community. But most importantly, this is a landmark day for our student athletes. This is all about high performance, as the president mentioned. This is about high performance for our student athletes in competition, but equally as important in the classroom, and this facility will, will make that possible. For the last month, I've been waking up every day pinching myself to make sure, is it really happening? And, and today shows, yes, it really is happening. When you have people of that caliber say up, stand up and say, this is moving forward, it's like, okay, it's for real now. So uh, I think I mentioned being Christmas, and this is the best Christmas of my life. Uh, and every day when I drive into work, I stop and see, okay, how much more have they torn down? Because it's like pulling another bow off a of present. So, I am very excited, and this will be an absolute change for track and field. This gives us a chance to recruit, compete, and host meets at a high level. Uh, and there's only, I think, nine or 10 300 meter tracks in the whole country. We'll have a facility that is, good, is as good as anyone in the nation. So that's pretty amazing. Well, it's been a, been a long time uh, coming with this. Uh, we had, uh, been talking about this since even before, right before I got here, that this was a potential. And, uh, so I was 99, they were talking about the, the indoor facility. And it's evolved over, over the years, and for us to finally have, uh, you know, closure on it. You know, the, the old Ralph Finglestead Arena uh, going down behind us, and then to, uh, you know, put the groundbreaking ceremony together. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a great moment for UND, not only UND football and UND track, but uh, Grand Forks and the University of North Dakota collectively. One of the teams that will be using that complex will be the UND football team. Offensive coordinator Luke Schleisner joins us now. Luke, welcome to the program. Nice to have you here. Thanks for having me. How about that complex? And uh, you guys have to be just chomping at the bit to get in there, huh? Yeah, it's very exciting. You know, I mean, it's been something that we've been, uh, you know, waiting on. And, you know, I think the, the word the uh, staff has used is a game changer. And I think it will be in recruiting. And, uh, you know, it'll, we'll have uh, facilities that are second to none in FCS. Now, we talked about that, that maybe the biggest impact is in recruiting with uh, bringing student athletes in and getting a look at that and, and how they can prepare and yeah, work their way onto the team. It, it definitely is. And, you know, I mean, it'll, it'll help us as a team as well uh, with winter conditioning and, and being able to do some things there. And, uh, and like I said, the recruiting is just a big deal. And, uh, you know, to have the, the beautiful facilities, it'll just help take us to the next level. Could get soft, though, Luke. 
I don't know about that. You know, we're you already, we're already like a that. young team, and, and we play nine indoor games this year, so. But, but we'll be all right. Look, there was a picture in the Grand Forks Herald with uh, Tim Tibisar and Jonathan Taves on the field, a Chicago Bears football game. Is that, would you like to be in that picture someday? Maybe not necessarily the same one, but do you have uh, aspirations of maybe uh, coaching in the professional ranks? Uh, potentially. You know, I mean, it's just something that you take day by day and, and, and uh, you know, year by year and try not to, you know, worry too much about the things you can't control. So. Uh, but I actually got to, you know, I recruit the Chicago area, so I got to spend quite a bit of time with Coach Tibisar uh, this spring and then also this summer. You know, so I visited the Bears staff a couple times, and, uh, you know, it's a fun job. So but I love the job I have here, too. So. Co must. Coach, uh, I know I was talking to the players on Saturday night uh, following the game, and uh, a tough one there. Uh, they mentioned that the team has a 24-hour rule. You get 24 hours to kind of let it uh, come to an end. Does the coaching staff have the 24-hour rule in effect, or did you guys just jump right into the offices and get ready for Montana? We have the 24-hour rule too. You know, it was uh, you know Sunday's a rough day always when you have to relive the loss, and you know especially uh, frustrating. Uh, you know, I, I I didn't feel good. I didn't sleep good. Uh, you know, I just felt like we, we were stuck on seven points for too long, uh, and we've got with the ex uh, explosive offense that we have that shouldn't happen and uh, and can't happen. Um, and, I, and I felt like we stopped ourselves as much as they stopped us. So it's it's always hard, but uh, you know, after 24 hours, it's time to move on. And Montana's a great football team, so we're going to have our work cut out for us again this week. Luke, the uh, the offense, as you mentioned, had the, all those uh, possessions without any points on it. But the fact that you did come back and make things happen later on has to be a big boost of confidence for the team, isn't it? It is, you know, I mean, our, our guys are already really confident and, and I think early we were maybe too hyped up, you know, I mean, just drop balls and, uh, you know, we, we overthrew an, a wide open Greg Harden later in the game that would have been a touchdown and, um, you know, those are throws that when he's wide open like that, we usually make that throw every time in practice, but, um, you know, it was a big game and, and there was some pressure and, um, you know, I, I thought the guys battled back though and, and came back and, it was fun to see the way that, that we finished, and we wish you know we were all confident we were going to get that last score and tie it up, but uh, you know it didn't happen. We've heard a lot about Montana and their offense and what they did with Appalachian State, but uh, their defense didn't allow much either. What are we going to see there? Well, obviously holding Appalachian State to six points. Uh, you know, watching the film, uh, Appalachian has some some great athletes. You know, they have a quarterback who is a uh, you know on the Walter Payton watch list. Um, you know, so it was very very impressive what their defense did and. Uh, you know, they return uh, 10 starters on defense, so they're an old, experienced team and, and very physical, and, and uh, you know, we're going to have to, you know, find ways and be creative to move the football. You did some things against them last year. Maybe you just copy that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can uh, replicate that, but, but I'm not sure. Coach, you... thanks for your time, and good luck against Montana on Saturday. Appreciate it. Thank you. Coach Schleisner, the uh, offensive coordinator on the UND football team. Still to come, UND student athletes get a chance to interact with the community. They give them a bunch of fried potatoes. Right now at Burger King, choose any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Whether you're craving a Whopper sandwich and an original chicken sandwich, an original chicken sandwich and a premium Alaskan fish sandwich, or a Whopper and another Whopper, come in today and get any two for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. Preparation starts early. You're setting up cameras, scouting the area, sitting in a tree stand. No unnecessary movements. Blend into your surroundings. The animal pops out and you're ready to go. The atmosphere at the archery shop is awesome. It's a place to get info on how to become a better bow hunter. I'm Eric Shack. I'm an archery expert at Shield. King, choose any two sandwiches for just five bucks. Whether you're craving a Whopper sandwich and an original chicken sandwich, an original chicken sandwich and a premium Alaskan fish sandwich, or a Whopper and another Whopper, come in today and get any two for just five bucks. Only at Burger King, where taste is king. 
September 11th, UND Soccer comes home to Bronson Field as they take on North Dakota State. Action starts at 4.30. Watch it live on UND Insider on UNDSports.com. Also wear your black for the annual Black Up Blackout game as football starts conference play in the big sky. They take on Montana in the Hall of Fame game Saturday at 6 o'clock. Get your tickets at the Alaris Center box office or at UNDSports.com. In 1966, North Dakota faced off against Idaho State. The first ever Potato Bowl. Since the 90s, the French fry feed has been part of the week leading up to the Potato Bowl. To serve the fries, student athletes pitch in proves to be a great experience for them and the community. We're out here at University Park, being French fries to people. Today here we are uh, trying to break a record for our French fry feed. We do this every year uh, during Potato Bowl week. And two years ago, we broke the record with 5,010 pounds, a little over two and a half tons, a lot of French fries. It's a get together of the community, UND, the potato industry, just to celebrate Potato Bowl week and see if we can break the record eating French fries. Our student athletes across the board, every single sport, uh, get out to the community, read in the schools, whatever it might be. You know, we're in a relatively small community, uh, and we're going to go back to these people week in and week out and ask them to buy tickets, to come sit in the stands. And you know what? How can they support us if they don't know who we are? It's absolutely great. UND puts together so many student athletes. It's absolutely unbelievable to help with the process of the French fry feed and everything else that you see going on here in the park. It's greatly appreciated by the group, and I wouldn't even venture the numbers of student athletes that are here, but they're all here with big smiles on and doing a lot of work. It's awesome to interact with the community, great spirit, so yeah, Grand Forks is a great community, so whenever we get the chance to go out there, we're always excited about it. This, this, is, this is great, and it's get, it seems like it gets bigger every single year, and, and we just, you know, all of this, with, this was not here when I first got here, it was just centralized over by the, by the shells, and, and so it's really neat to see this get bigger and bigger every single year. And, and uh, it's a testament to Grand Forks. You know, I've said this all along, and we tell our freshmen right when they get here, this is a great place, and and this proves it. You know, just this beautiful park and all these people in it celebrating French fry feed, potato bowl, and just you know the football game coming on Saturday is just the culmination in, in, in a long week of fun. My first year here in 1999, you know, I knew that UND was different, and and uh, getting here and seeing this. Uh, with all the people, 5,000 people in University Park, world's largest French fry feed, meet the UND football team. Uh, you know, it just kind of opens your eyes. And I think uh, for our freshmen, you know, so I was a first year guy and, and our freshmen were the same way. You know, that this is a big deal. It's important to the community. Um, our program's important to the community. They're out to support us. Uh, they know who we are. And, and it's also one of those that, you know what, with that, uh, you know, you, you have to respect that and you have to make sure that you represent that well because, you know, you do represent this community and, and you want to make sure that you do it the right way. The third straight game at home starts for UND football this Saturday and our panel will throw their prediction hats into the ring next on UND Insider Weekly. UND Insider Weekly is sponsored by Shields Gear. Passion Sports, by Burger King, where taste is king, and by The Ground Round. North Dakota football single game tickets are on sale now. North Dakota football takes on Montana in the annual Hall of Fame game sponsored by Midco Sports Network. Wear black for the annual blackout versus Montana at the Alara Center. Kickoff is at 6 p.m. For 25 years, the Big Sky Conference has been showcasing women's athletics. 
25 years of authenticity, hard work, community, and 25 years of plan to win. For the first time since 2007, it's going. But remembering that our vision is bigger than winning. We're the Big Sky, the heart of Division I, the heart of the American West. It's prediction time as North Dakota meets the Grizz of Montana Saturday night at the Alaire Center, 6 o'clock kickoff. Gentlemen, let's, uh, well, last week we started with Tom. Let's start with Paul this time. I'm going to go with North Dakota knocking off the Grizz. Uh, it's going to be a high-scoring affair again. This one's going to be 35-27. And I think with the big game, because he had his first game last week, and they used him in a variety of ways, I think he's going to have a big game. Watch for Jameer Jackson to have a, a coming-out party. Last year was Greg Harden in this game. I think it's going to be Jameer Jackson this time in North Dakota. Just, I guess, stifles the Grizz, and, and the Grizz will go back in, uh, to Missoula, kind of sh scratching their heads yet once more. Back in their cave, huh? Okay. Too many questions still persist about the defense. I'm going to say uh, it's going to be another high-scoring game like it was last year. Um, Montana takes it 38-35. to 35. Yeah, I think we can all agree uh, a shootout is to be expected here. I'll go uh, Montana 45, UND 38. I think Jordan Johnson, uh, back with the Grizz, has that team. I know they're ranked 11 right now, but they're a top five type program. Is the running back, is it Van, Trevor Van? Yep, transfer, transfer from Marshall. From Marshall, and he, uh, he can chalk up some yards as well. He did against Appalachian State, that's for sure. The defense has got to find a way to stop him, but a good balance by Montana. And I think that veteran defense, as Coach Leisner told us earlier on the program, will make the difference. I go 37-30 uh, Montana to win on Saturday night against UND. And, of course, then it doesn't get any easier the following, uh, following <laughs> week as well with Montana State. Montana comes in ranked number 11 in the country, and Montana State uh, is number three right now, I do believe, right? They may not have their quarterback in that game. That's a storyline right. to follow for that. It's Denarius we'll check on McGee. that next week for sure. Just a but, reminder to black out that uh, Lara Center coming up on Saturday night, hopefully everybody will grab their black, best black shirt. Tom Miller, Brad Schlossman, Grant Forsell, Paul Ralston, UND Athletics, thanks for being on the program, guys, and we'll see you next week. Join us for a new episode of UND Insider Weekly. Now on a new night, next Wednesday at 8 p.m. on UNDsports.com and Friday at 5.30 on Midco Sports Network.